Let me see. Where do I find that? Here you go into participants, and that's where you hit it. Oh, okay. There it is. And then uh, mute all. Yes. Right. Then you'll, you'll have to unmute John, or John will have to unmute himself, one of the two. Okay. There we go. I think I should be got a thumbs up from somebody so they can yep. notice that I'm okay. So for the tail, I'll be using um, some crinkled Zelon. I get this from Blue Ribbon Flies. And it's called crinkled Zelon for a reason. This is what it looks like coming out of the package. And what I do is I got it connected to my vise with a with some weight and let gravity stretch it out. And so it looks like this and it's a lot better to use. If I, and for a size 16 and smaller, I'll take a section of this and only use about half to two thirds of, a, of the hank. I'll trim and pull that down the tag in that I don't have to go back in and tie it. Hold my tail at an angle, use spiral wraps to go back and make about three wraps right at the barb of the hook. Uh-oh, somebody shared their screen. It says Milt sharing. Milt, Milt, un unshare your screen, Milt. Let me see if I can find him here. A hey, hey, quick question: How far back did you go on the uh, the shuck when you tied that in? Okay, you went back to the barb. It looks like going back to the barb. So the barb is right where the thread is thread is hanging. Yeah, got and, it. And I'm going to trim my tail so it's about half of a hook shank. The dubbing I'm using is some Zelon dubbing. And these these fibers are short, fairly short. And I apply my dubbing to the thread, I squeeze and rotate one direction. I'm going clockwise on this. Jim, I have a question, John. Yeah. From Jim Ferguson. He's asking you, why is the vice moving? I don't know. Um, I've got a, the sitting on a tripod there. Don't know. And do we want to add a small amount of dubbing or um, low, low, small body, I guess, or is that pretty thick? This one is a thicker amount, and you're okay. going to notice that this is a chubby body. Okay. Now for what the deer the, hair. What's the material you're using for that? Is that the uh, Zelon dubbing? Okay. Yes. I think I've got rabbit. <laughs> uh, there's a question from Ron Geyer. Is there a good substitute for the dubbing? Um, I think you could use hair's ear or just any spiky type of, uh, of dubbing. Um, you could use, you could use this. So it happens to be, um, what, it, what I like about the Zelon dubbing is some, it's got some sparkle to it. So maybe some uh, hmm. hair tron from, from hairline. What color is the dubbing? It's tan. Tan, thank you. 
So let's talk about deer hair for a while. So this is a piece of, of deer hair that I really like. And you're gonna notice that that the deer hair has uh, black tips and other demonstrators have talked about this before. But right at the ends, there's some black tips and then a tan section and then a grayish brown down in here. And this is a piece that I, I really enjoy. Here's another piece. And they're all marked, um, you, I, I've purchased a lot of my deer hair. I don't have a hide sitting around like my friend Alvidi and Gretchen have. Uh, but I purchased a lot of mine from Blue Ribbon Flies and I just talked with them today and they're having problems getting deer hair. But as I mentioned in some of my posts, if you were to use, go to your local fly shop and look for the Nature Spirit brand, they have some terrific hair. And it's actually marked for X caddis or Comparadon or sparkle Dun hair. And we'll talk about that once we get to the next fly. But um, you're looking for uh, the, the difference between the X caddis and the sparkle down here is the amount of black tips. So for the, for the caddis, you want longer black tips and the sparkle duns mayfly, you want shorter black tips. But we want an area in here in this brownish gray that is going to uh, flare a little bit. Got a quick question. Here's it, here, let me finish the, with the deer hair first. And with this one, this is a, just a very similar one, but a different shade of deer hair. And then this last one, which I'm going to demonstrate with, this is shorter fibers and the shorter fibers don't make any difference. The length of the fiber, a long fiber or a short fiber. It's just a mat, the longer fiber will allow you to control the deer hair. It's much easier to work with. I'm gonna tie one with these, but this one shows a lot of underfur in it. And you can see the fuzz that sticks up. And underfur when you're tying deer hair wings is not your friend. And the reason is it makes it very difficult to compress. And I'll demonstrate that with a piece of this deer hair. But I'm gonna tie it first with one of these, this first strip. And I'm just gonna take my, take my scissors and pull some out and prep it. So who had a question now? John Clinton Brummett here. Um, question was about the black tips on the hair. You explained that you need short for the sparkle done and, and longer for the caddis, but can I ask why? I don't understand why. Sure. As I, I'll answer that while I prep this. And so I'm just taking out the under fur. So the two things that are bad when you get some deer hair is either under fur or broken tips. And let me, let me stack this. I'll put it in the stacker. And I'll pull it out horizontally the same direction as my, I'm going to prepare the wing. So you can see that there's black tips and then the tan and then the gray. And what you're looking for is on all of these flies that we're tying tonight, you want to attach it in this grayish part because that's what's gonna flare. And the reason it flares is because this section is hollow. So the black tips in here don't have any hollowness in, in it and it progressively gets more hollow here. So if you had black tips that were this long or this long in this particular case, you're looking for this, you want to apply it to your fly on this gray side, which will flare. And so let me show that to you. You 
I'm going to hold it over my fly to measure it. And the measurement I want is at the end of the black, right around halfway through the tail. I'll hold it with my other hand. And I'm going to use my thumbnail to find right where the eye of the hook is. I'll go off camera and cut it. And I'll push down just a little bit. I have flat threads. So it's just, it's not going to go forward or backward and make a couple of loose wraps and then pull down. I've got three more wraps and angle through the head and finish it right behind the eye of the hook. I'll talk about the head in just a moment. Let me finish it first. I'll apply some head cement right on the thread and do a five turn whip finish. And just touch my thread with my sharp scissors and I'm done with that. Squeeze down, and there's a nice little X cat. Now, the reason I did that head that direction is because it's I don't have to come back in here and trim it. I'm going to tie another one and show you a different technique on how to mount the wing. And I will use a, uh, you'll see the, the difference what I'm talking about. But I, I learned this by watching one of Kelly Gallup's YouTube videos. And this creates a really nice little round head and you don't have to go back in and trim it. This next one I'll trim and you'll see that it takes a little longer to do it. So after you learn how to do this, you can tie these flies probably in three minutes. So let me tie another one. We'll use a, a different deer hair. Actually, I'll use the same deer hair and the only difference will be how I apply the wing. So I'll speed this up. I go down about a third of the way, trim, use some of my Zelon with a pinch wrap. I'll pull that back, bind down the tag in, open wraps. and right to the barb of the hook. And I take two or three additional turns. And the reason I do that is if I pull up on the wing, it doesn't bounce the thread forward. So it just secures it right there. I'll go back in right here and trim it about half to two thirds of the body. Get some of my dubbing. You can see how, what the dubbing looks like. Use a little moisture. And caddis are a lot chunkier body than a mayfly. And I'll show you the difference when I tie the mayfly. But this one, I'll just wrap. Hey, hey, John, question for you on your dubbing. Yep. Uh, as you apply it, wh whose brand is that? This happens to be... Zelon dubbing again? Zelon dubbing, yeah. Zelon dubbing. Because I've got, I've got problems getting a noodle going on mine. But I'm using Antron dubbing. Yeah, Ant Antron is, is, is tough, but you just, if you... Squeeze, push, push your thumb and forefinger together, squeeze and rotate one direction a little bit at a time. And some, sometimes it's easier to use less dubbing because it attaches much easier to your thread. So I'm, you. I'm using my rotary function <clears throat> and going back and forth, um, just get, move it forward out of the, the point of the hook. 
And I'm going to a point that I found is that works for me is two eye lengths behind the eye of the hook. Thank you, John. And then I'll go back and where the thorax area is, make that just a little bit chunkier. Got the spikies there. I'm going to use the same material. And hold it by the tips. In a lot of cases, I just use my finger or I use my scissors and the little under fur that's there is removed. Place it in a hair sacker, we'll pull it out. And this time I'm not gonna cut it. This is how I used to tie them. Still gonna use the same measurement about halfway back on the tail. Again, I'll take two loose wraps. But I'm not going to trim it this time. Two additional ones. And then I'll pull all of these up. And just take about a third, pull them back and come in and take a secure thread wrap, take another third. And notice when I pull down how the some of those flare. I'll do another time just to show, see how that flares. And that's one way to help lock in your, your wing so it isn't gonna rotate around the vise. And the benefit of this is that all of those fibers in are a handle so you can remove it out of the way. And then I'll pull this all up. Now on the other method, I would have been done with the fly by now. And all the heads are exactly the same in this particular case, I'm going to take it, hold them up, and at the same angle as my wing, I trim it. And that's that's the way I used to tie most of my most of my elk hair caddis and deer hair caddis. And I'll tell you, when you start with that other method, once you get it down, it works really well. The only Scary part for me was starting it because I thought I would have too long of a wing or too short of a wing, but just you need to figure out what your measurements are and then take a chance, use your thumbnail and go ahead and measure. So while I'm, I'm going to show a different piece of deer hair now, but I'm going to tie the fly and uh, if you've got a question now would be a good time to ask it and I'll just tie the body till I get to the wing. Uh, Bala has a question. Hi Bala. Hey John, uh, can you, when you tie the PMDs, can you show us how much of superfine dubbing is required to tie a size 18 or 16 PMD? Yes. Uh, you have managed to uh, tie really a small body. I'm unable to replicate that. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for that question. I'll, um, I'm going to tie, I'll start with a larger, a larger sparkle done, and then I'm going to go down to a size 16 and tie what's called an improved sparkle done, and I'll explain why I do that, and that will answer your question right then. I appreciate that. Yeah. I can't figure out whose dog is barking uh, that's not muted. 
Again, I'm going to take the, make sure I'm wrapping right over the, starting my dubbing right over the barb. And quickly with my rotary device. Okay, so let's go back to that piece of deer hair. And if you watch my, my video on the X caddis, you'll see exactly the same thing. But notice all of this fuzz in here. And I'm going to select some deer hair off of this. I liked, I liked this piece of deer hair because of the coloration of it. And you notice that I haven't used very much. Well, there's a reason for that because it's a pain in the butt to tie it with. And here's why. I'm going to tie, I'm going to clip a piece of deer hair and there's fuzz in it and I'm not going to do anything to it. I'm going to try to stack it. One of the thing about having fuzz, it doesn't allow those fibers to be loose in your, in your hair stacker. And so this one, they're all pretty even, but that's just happenstance. I don't know why it does that. But if, if you remove all of that fuzz, then it allows those fibers to, to move about more. So like, like, like my fingers, they'll just go like this as opposed to be held together. But I'm going to tie this just like the last one. I'm going to take two loose wraps and pull. And I'll take a couple more wraps. And that looks pretty good, doesn't it? But watch when I pull on the on the thread. It's, it's starting to rotate around the hook. And the reason that you remove the under fur is that it allows that thread to go around the hook and just tighten down. So let me take another piece of that. And this time I'll remove the fuzz. I'm muted, it's okay. So I'll use the same technique, trying to take out all of this fuzz. And it's still in there. And it's still in there. Is it too noisy for you? Somebody isn't muted. Somebody isn't muted. I'm, I'm looking for them. <laughs> Somebody has someone else in the room they're talking to. Yep, and I'm trying to find out who so it I is. Would have, I would have been finished with my fly by now. And I just dropped it all. So that's, that's a, good, a good way to show you that um, So here I'm trying to grab some hair and it's pretty short. So it's difficult, difficult to hold, difficult to, to work with. And I think there's still some under fur in there. Hence why I don't use that piece of deer hair very much. So I'll measure again. 
I'm gonna use my thumb nail. I'll trim those fibers and I'm gonna hold it right on top and push down just a little bit. So the deer hair starts to sit right on top of the hook. Take two wraps. And then wiggle my thread through. So that shows you the how you can use that same piece if you've got a bunch of under fur in it, but you just need to take your time and remove it. So if you're going to take your time and remove it, the best thing to do is to take your time when you're buying it and look at each piece of deer hair you buy. And if you have a choice, buy a piece of deer hair that doesn't have any fur on it, under fur on it. So there's no one, another one that works. The last one of the X caddis that I'll tie, I wanna demonstrate what happens if you use too much deer hair. People ask me all the time, how much deer hair do you use to put onto your wings? And I say, well, it depends on the size of fly you're using. But I'll show you what happens. And it just takes experience on how much. If you don't have any, if you don't have this body or the tail material from Blue Ribbon, uh, local fly shops sell something called sparkle yarn, and I think it's similar type material. I'm going to go back to my original piece of deer hair, and I'm going to pull out more deer hair than I need. Quickly pull some of that out. Whoops. I see I didn't put a, didn't build my body. It's the one thing when you're demonstrating ties, flies when no one else is in the room, they can't look at you and point. Okay, I'll pull my deer hair out. I'll measure it. I'm just going to tie it two wraps, pull. And now I'll pull this time. and it's just starting to rotate a little bit around the hook. So that's how you know you've got too much deer hair. And if that happens, sometimes you can pull that out, take out a few pieces and then rewrap it. The other thing people do I'm not, I'm going to measure, this is happens to be long, but I just want to do this for demonstration purposes. You notice I said I take two wraps and then pull. If you don't do that and you just start taking your thread and trying to wrap it, your thread torque will push your wing to the other side. And that's a problem many people have twisting their wings so they're over off to the side away from you. But if you, let me, 
I lost a couple of fibers there. Eric might end up with this fly, so I better do it the right way. I'll pull these out. Measure using my thumbnail. I'll trim. So taking those two loose wraps and then pulling. It just starts to tighten around your, your deer hair from all sides. And that will help you keep your, your deer hair on top of the hook. There isn't any um, on the bottom of it. So hopefully that, that will help. So there, there are any other questions on X caddis? Yeah, John uh, Dalton has a question. Uh, he wants to know why the body needs to be a bit thicker and spikier for the X caddis. Because that's the diameter of a caddis. If you look at a caddis along the river, they have really thick bodies. So they're fat. Whereas a, a mayfly has a really skinny body. So what you're doing is just using your observation skills when you're out on the, on the river and you notice that. And so yeah, I'm just trying to imitate what I see in nature and caddis flies. If you see pictures of them, look on my website, you'll see some caddis flies and they have chunky, chunky bodies. So that's what this, uh, Using, I wouldn't use, um, you, you could, but I wouldn't use a super fine dubbing. I'm gonna use that for my mayfly. And I'll talk about why I do that. But um, when I tie my PMD uh, sparkle done, but if you're using some sort of a, 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 a thicker dubbing compared to what that, uh, super fine dubbing is. Okay, any other questions yeah. on X caddis? Yeah, did John, it, one question on the pattern. Time? Sure. Uh, when would you expect to fish this in the, is it an April, May, June fly or when do you expect the fish would be feeding on this pattern? You know, I could, uh, I was out on the river a couple of days ago and there were caddis along the river. So whenever right. you see them, they'll they'll be out year round, yeah, you know, on the metolius it it appears, or or almost year round. But this one, this size sixteen, is for the tan caddis that hatch in June and July. June and, and so July. I've, okay. I've used this um, extensively in late June, early July on the on the Madison River. This is the only fly you need. John? There's tons and tons of caddis. When the when the Deschutes back in the in the day used to have a lot of um, caddis hatches, this this worked really well. Yeah, somebody else had a question. Thank you. Yeah, uh, John it's Ron Geyer. Um, you know, your website shows a variety of different colors for the body, but it only mentions. I want to make sure this was right. You would still keep the shuck, either that gold or amber. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, so that, let me just talk about that for a minute. This is a fly pattern that from Blue Ribbon Flies back when Craig Matthews owned the shop and they, their fly pattern sheet had, had different colors to imitate different caddis, but they all used exactly the same tails. So it's a, a caddis gold, a caddis um, amber, something like that. And what it's trying to imitate is the, as the caddis pupa swim to the, to the surface, then they, they'll hatch and they, may, they might still have something attached to them. So it just kind of adds a little bit of um, some, something for the, for the trout to see. And it, I would call it kind of a, a cripple if I were talking about a, a, a mayfly. Yeah, John, would you expect the shuck to be always gold? Yes. 
And John, one other question. You mentioned you saw a caddis last week on the Metolius. Was it a big brown thing? Or? No, it was a, it was a, actually there was a silver striped sedge, which is about a size 10. And there was a, a grayish color body caddis, um, probably in the size 14 range. I saw something pretty big with brown. I, I couldn't get close to it, but. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's a silver striped sedge that hatching that, that this time of year. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay, let's move to the sparkle den then. Let me kind of rearrange my materials here. So for the sparkle down, I'm going to tie one in a size 12 to imitate a March brown. We'll start with that. And then Bala, I'll finally get to your question. Once I get to uh, PMD, I'll tie a different couple of different versions there. Okay. For the March brown, I'm going to use some 70 denier kind of rust color thread. I like that for the head. And I'm going to start right from the eye of the hook, go down halfway, and then halfway back. And that's a perfect place to apply your wing. Here's my deer hair that I'll use. This is uh, some sparkle done or compare done type deer hair. And once I, I'll cut it off again, taking it from the hide, using my scissors to hold it up and trim it. Prep it exactly the same way. And we'll stack it. And instead of pulling it out this direction, the wing would extend that uh, to the tail of the fly, but I'm, I'm going to pull it out the opposite direction. Because I'm going to tie in the wing extending out over the eye of the hook. And you know what? I don't like that. This actually this is a good, a good demonstration. Here's some deer hair that has broken tips. And the reason I can tell they're broken tips is because I, there's white in the area that should have black. So here's the short black tips and then the tan and the gray. And the gray is the area that I want to use. And so this particular one would, I might have a hard time tying size 18 and 20 because it would be in this area and it's not as hollow so it wouldn't flare as much. I want my proportion to be about the length of the hook, the shank of the hook. And I'm going to pull this slightly towards me as I take my wraps because thread torque will then move it right on top of the hook. Again, it's two wraps. And then I take eight to 12, this happens to be 10 right in the middle touching turns towards the back of the hook. I'll lift this up. You notice I didn't, re didn't remove my fingers, so I can cut it at an angle, take a th few thread wraps through the base of those fibers that will help. And then for the tail, I'm gonna use crinkled Z-Long. Again, this is Mayfly Brown. 
And as I mentioned before, I'm just going to take a portion of that. Actually, I'll, I'll use a whole section for a size 12. So I'll take a couple of loose wraps of my tail material and just pull it down. And this is what is creating my taper. So with the, the deer hair, I've got it at an angle like that and I'm putting the Zelon tail right on top of that, which helps to create a nice taper. I'll come back up to the just behind the eye or the, the deer hair that I've got, take my fingers and sweep it up. And similar to the other one I was using, I'll take about a third and pull down, take another third, pull down and take the remaining third, take a couple of wraps directly in front and that will post your wing so it's straight up. I'll move my thread forward. I stop right at the point. And this is where I'm going to apply my super fine dubbing. But it will be a... No, actually, I'm going to use something else. I'm using this. Uh... UV2 fine and dry. And it's uh, a, it's marked March brown color. So I'm going to use this March brown color. And you'll find that this material is much easier to dub. And my dubbing technique, I take out a little at a time and apply it to the thread. I'm just taking small bits of dubbing. And you can build a, a bigger body, but I'm still using just little pieces. And you'll see why I do that when I tie a smaller sparkle down. So notice that this distance I have bare thread. And the reason I stopped at the point, I always had problems when I was tying these that I would have too much dubbing right where I started the body, which will be back here. So with these bare thread wraps, I'm going backwards now without building any additional bulk. And there's my first wrap above the barb of the hook with a little bit of dubbing on it. And that's how you can create some very fine bodies, which are what a, a mayfly really looks like. That's worth the price of admission, that little trick right there. There you go. Now, as I'm coming back forward, I don't want my dubbing to get onto the deer hair. If it does, it'll start to move that deer hair forward. So I'll pull this wing up. So I've left one thread wrap behind. I'll pull my wing up and I'll start moving forward to where I want my dubbing to end and then come back and go over the top of the deer hair. So it's pushing it back. And I'm going to use just a tiny bit more. And my next wrap will be directly behind the wing. And I'll use my thread to move that wing straight up. And I'm filling in that gap. And what that does, if my scissors is the deer hair, I wrap behind, I leave a space, then I wrap in front. And the, what happens is you're slowly bringing the dubbing onto the deer hair so it sticks straight up. 
I finish right behind the eye of the hook. Take a five turn whip finish. And this time I want it to be about the length of the body. Don't pull tight on this material. If you pull tight, it'll bounce back and it'll be too short. So just let it hang there. So there's a nice sparkle done wing. I'll tie another one and I'll reinforce this, but Back when I was, uh, when I first started tying comparadons, it was probably comparadon, which is, has a tail instead of a shuck, which is a sparkle gun. And if you're like me, you were taught that you would use going halfway back, halfway down, halfway back. You were taught that you use thread, a, a thread dam to make your wing stick up. And when it was at the, at the vise, it would do that and it was perfect. And then you'd put it in your fly box and you'd go fish and the next day, all of these wings would be sticking forward. And so using this technique, it ends up, um, it ends up working a lot, a lot better. I'm going to take some more deer hair. Let me start over here. Remove all the fuzz. Why are we removing all the fuzz? So we can compress it. And I'll teach you the wrong way. If you were to take this out and, oh, I've got to adjust it and adjust it, bring it back over here. And now my tips are, are not aligned. So if you take it out the right direction first, it eliminates how many times you have to handle it. So measure, I'm holding a little bit towards me, two wraps, pull. There's 10 wraps. I'm a counter, so I count everything it seems like. Cutting those at an angle. Now, if you watch other people tie these, they'll, they'll uh, make their wing, they'll post their wing now and then tie in their, their tail. And I always thought, why do that since the tail's out of the way right now? Why not tie in the, the tail? So I'll slide that down and that fills in the taper. So as I was talking about, now I would take 20, 30 wraps somewhere in there to have that wing sit up like that. But for me, it always continued to move forward after a day or two. So by taking a third of this and wrapping, putting a thread wrap, a loose wrap, and then pull down tightly, take another third, a loose wrap, pull down tightly, and then I'll pull this back and take two or three wraps right at the base. And for some reason, those three wraps will keep your 
your wing straight up. Now I'll try not to touch them with my thread. Come back to the point of the hook again and apply my dubbing. I know I'm going to have to put some more on. So I've got thread, bare thread. I'm wrapping backwards in open spirals. And then right at the barb of the hook is where I place my first wrap of dubbing. Apply some more dubbing. And I'll reiterate, I'm not going to touch my deer hair because that'll start to push, push the wing forward. And I don't want to do that. So I'll pull all those fibers up and place the wrap right at the base of the, the base of the wing. Take a couple of wraps forward and then backwards and I'm building a taper back up into the wing that pushes it back. So you can see it's actually, if I kept going, I could, I could make a caddis almost. I tell you, I've been tying a lot of size 16 PMDs. And so this feels like a, using a lot of dubbing. Now I'll go back behind and just use my thread to hold those wings or the fibers up. And invariably, you'll have a couple pieces of deer hair fiber that are in your way. and then pull the wing back and place it right in the front, a couple of wraps. And again, what you're doing is compressing the deer hair. So you're, if my fingers were the, were the deer hair, it just moves them forward. So let's move down to a size 16. So my, for my friends over in the Willamette Valley, I would have this fly for the March Browns on the McKinsey. So you notice that all the fibers are on the top part of the hook. So for the next one, I'll use the same model, a 1310 in a size 16. And I'll tie two versions of this. This time I'll move to a uni thread and a dot, yellow. I'm starting right behind the eye of the hook, taking touching turns halfway down and then halfway back. And that's a good spot. So uh, you notice I did that on a size 12. It's in exactly the same spot as my size 16. I'm gonna use a little bit different piece of deer hair
Same thing, I'm removing the under fur. You can see those short black tips in this particular case. And that's the mark of some really good sparkle down deer hair. The length of the, of the hook shank, take two soft wraps. Touching turns. Place a couple of wraps in there. We'll take one of these for a size 16, drop it on the floor. Now I caught it. I'll split some of that off. I just don't like the looks of having a whole hank on there. It just proportionally, it seems too thick for me. So I've got about half or two thirds. I'll just cut that off. Take two soft wraps and pull it down. And that's again, creating my taper. And now take your fingers and sweep up the wing. Take a third of it, second, Third. And two wraps. Use my thread to pull back the deer hair out of the way. Now in this particular case, I see a couple of errant pieces of deer hair and I'm gonna remove them right now. And I'll be using some super fine PMD. So I'm starting to pull out my dubbing. And this is how you make small flies. So this is way too much. So I'll pull those fibers out so they're longer and apply it around the thread. And you notice that there's barely any dubbing on the thread. I still have that bare amount of thread. I'll continue to go backwards to where the where the barb of the hook is. And I hold the tail so it doesn't move over so I don't tie it off to the side. I want it directly on top. So you notice how skinny that body is. And if you wanted it thicker, you could just go back and forth with your thread. So I'm leaving one thread wrap behind the wing. I pull the wing back and right at the base, I take a couple of wraps, go forward and come back onto the wing. Go behind the wing and fill in that one last section that you left. And that's a very sparse mayfly. John, can you talk about your head cement method that's right there? Yeah. Tim was asking about that. Yeah, I just um, put a little bit on my on my thread. It's 
So I, the reason I do this is that it doesn't get in the eye, the hook of the eye, the eye of the hook. And if your knots are really good, maybe you don't even need them. Since I sell my flies, I think, oh, that's a little bit of extra. But if I were tying them just for me, I don't, I don't know if I'd ever use them. So there's a size 16. And you can pull the deer hair fibers out. So it's 180 degrees. Let me tie one that I, they call it the improved sparkle down. And Bala, this will answer your question. So especially for many of the size 16s, I use this technique and down. So 16, 18, 20, 22. So the same exact proportions, halfway down, halfway back. We'll apply our wing. Remove all of the under fur. I twist my, my hair sacker and at times here in central Oregon, the static electricity is so bad, it just sticks in there. You can get some static guard, excuse me a minute. This is what my friend Al Beatty taught me. And spray, spray the deer hair, spray your, all of your tools so that it doesn't stick, but it seems to be working okay tonight. So you notice there's one fiber that's sticking out. That's a short one. So I'm, my mark is right here. I'm just visually seeing where I need to apply my wing, take two soft wraps, oops, it slipped down. And make sure you're your deer hair is just touching your, your hook shank. In this particular case, I didn't do a super good job. So there's some extra pieces down in here and you can cut those out sweep it up and you can kind of see but they're still mostly on top of the hook we'll take a few wraps and this time i'm going to go one wrap behind the eye of uh, the, the deer hair. And this will be an improved sparkle done. And the difference is we're going to apply the Zilon right behind the wing. And it will be a backing. So take two loose wraps and you can see me pull this down until they're the same length as the deer hair. Whoops, too much. In fact, I'm gonna double that over and so you can see it better.
And this particular time, I'm not going to post my wing yet, but I'm going to continue down with my thread, taking touching turns. I'm doing this slow so you can see it. This is half speed. Go down to the barb and then touching turns, go back. And you've just created your body. So for size 18s and 20s, this is the technique I use for all of my sparkle guns. I found that I can tie a size 16 using very sparse dubbing, but uh, the thread will be this will be the body as well. In this particular case, I'll go up now. Now I'm going to post my wing and I'll take my Ceylon and my deer hair. Flattening my thread. Take a sparse amount of dubbing. And we're going to wrap the thorax area. Okay, I have my dubbing, I can't get off of my thumb. Shorten up on my thread, I'll hold back my wing. And this time I'm going to start in front and then go behind. And this is how I tie a lot of my size 16s and particularly 18s and 20s. So Bala, that's one of the techniques I use then to create very small mayflies because I don't even use dubbing on the back part of my fly. Glad that done, I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah. So the reason, one of the reasons that I enjoy the, the improved sparkle den is that there's that backing to the wing. And sometimes the, when you're fishing it, the light reflects off of that and you can locate your fly a lot better, particularly for smaller bugs. So if you're fishing an 18 and a, a 20, a 22, Let me pull out a, from the a provider box. Let me pull out a small let's see, this is a this will be a size twenty. That would be a blue wing olive. And so you can see that the small body, that's about the only way you can create a really small body is with a, with thread. But you'll also notice that there's a backing of Zelon. And you can really see that when it's sitting on the water. So, uh, John, the, the difference between a sparkle done and a, an improved sparkle done is the fly is exactly the same. It's just that you add that so that the fisherman can see it. 
Yep, so you've got a backing of Xelon right okay. behind the wing. And then for, the, and you could actually use that for all of your um, sparkle dunes if, if you wanted to. I could have done that for my size 12 too, but it's big enough that I don't see that I need that. And then for the, the body from here back is just thread. Now the other type of a sparkle done you can tie. Here's one I use for a kind of a green drape pattern or a, imitates a cottatella mayfly, but it uses, it's exactly the same except the body is made out of a, um, a quill. So in that particular case, it adds some segmentation, but you, I don't know if you need it. Sometimes these flies are for the fly fisher instead of the fish. Now, John, you were talking about just an amber or gold tail for most of the sparkle duns. When you go down to these improved sparkle duns, are you using a Zelon that matches the natural? I'm using exactly the same one. So it's a mayfly brown or a brown. Uh, many of these mayflies, the nymph you would use to imitate them would be um, a pheasant tail. So think of the coloration of a pheasant tail. And that's what this is trying to imitate where it's um, kind of translucent because the, the mayfly is crawling out of that and it kind of gets stuck. So that's why this, um, this fly is so, so useful in uh, cooking fish because it just tricks them. They think that uh, if, if you watch mayflies come off the water, if they hatch, they, a lot of them just fly off immediately. But it, sometimes their wings are stuck in the, in the water. Other times there's, um, their bodies are stuck in the shuck you might catch one of those as it's floating down. And that's what this is trying to imitate. And most trout are really lazy and they'll try to pick these off much more than just a normal uh, mayfly. So the other mayfly would be to change uh, the comparator and the only difference is the tail. So you would just right. have two tails sticking out uh, and that would imitate a natural dun and this imitates one that's kind of stuck in the in the shuck still. So even a blue-winged olive, you'd have that March brown Zelon. Mayfly brown, but yeah, yeah, yeah. A brownish color. Yep. Yeah, exactly. So I use it for a blue wing olive, a PMD, every every mayfly that I tie. Makes it simple then. Thank you. Mm -hmm. well, Any other questions? Yeah, before, before you go, um, I don't see any other questions on the board. Uh, oh, here's, uh, is, is that a different hook on the 20? The different hook yeah. style? Actually, it is. It's a, this happens to be a TMCO 206. 206. Mm -hmm. um, it's a short shank. It's a cool looking hook. And for the others, I use, um, I'll, I'll, I'll tie that in a 1310 as well. So this is a one extra short, and I like that from a standard, which means that the gap of the hook is a little bit proportionally a little bit bigger on, on this. But I use a lot of 1310s for many of my Sparkle Duns. Well, John, and we've got, got a lot of thank yous. Go yeah, ahead. I have, I have my, um, just a, one last thing for the, for my YouTube channel. You, you can see me tying this, so you can go back to that and watch it as well. Actually, the, the resolution on the YouTube will be better than the, the Zoom. Well, the other thing I'd like you to uh, uh, tell everybody about is the blog posts and yeah. sign up for them because it is awesome. If you could tell them about that and how to move around your website because that's my go-to place. 
for fishing in the West? Yeah, it's um, my river keeper flies. I'm just about ready to start my seventh year, I think. Mm -hmm. But I blog once a week about a variety of topics. And I also include uh, another blog each week on a throwback Thursday. Usually they're flies. And I just try to keep the uh, fly fishing going. The history, I think, is important to our sport. And it's just one small way to help um, to help keep that, that moving forward. And there's, I've got over, I think, 200 fly pattern sheets on my website that you can get links to. And you can print them out easily. Uh, so it's just a wealth of knowledge, I think. And the other secret thing you should use is not a secret, but maybe many people don't use it. It's the search button on top of my, on the top right of my website. Just type in any fly and it will come up with what different topics or pages where I've talked about um, that, that particular fly. So that's just a really easy way to, to find them. Well, I really appreciate you uh, yeah. all the work and it yeah. takes a lot of work and effort to get this all working and and to have a good class. So uh, we all really appreciate. Hope you uh, enjoyed it. Yeah, it's really good. And tune in next Thursday for Jeff Parent's class. And don't forget that uh, packing foam. It's uh, it's an important part of this. And, you know, any any anything you got, lays around out of a package and you could pretty well go to any garbage bin around. <laughs> you could do some dumpster diving, but uh, it's easy to find this stuff anywhere, really. Gary, another good source of that material is at furniture stores. Yeah. And when you tie the buncy done and flies like that for the body, you need a lot of it and furniture stores throw it away. They have it in the back for various thicknesses of it. So you can get, that, get it there. So if you get caught dumpster diving uh you can say john said it's okay <laughs> sherry sent me <laughs> john said thank you john it. so yeah, we'll see welcome. you guys next week and uh tune in and it's going to be a great uh, great uh, new and jeff perrin is a a world of information and he even has some uh, powerpoints for you and everything it's going to be pretty good uh so we'll look forward to seeing you guys there. Meantime, if you have any questions, give me a shout, send me an email. Be happy to answer the question. Great show, John. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you. Good night, Bye, John. John. Thank you, John. You're welcome. Nice to see everybody. Bye. Bye.